This liquid right here is one of the most powerful switches for your brain. And that's why it's loved by millions across the world and is one of the most addictive substances that we know. And this video is going to explore every single aspect of this, the wonderful world of coffee. We've all had that feeling, that first sip of coffee in the morning feels just like heaven. Like someone's just magically turned on all the lights in your brain. But here's the little secret. Coffee isn't actually giving you any energy at all. It's actually stealing that energy from your future self. If you're new to the channel, welcome. I'm Sujay Nair, a neurology doctor working every single day to find all the different things that you could introduce into your life to build a better brain. And today we're going to dive into the fascinating world of coffee by understanding exactly how it works, why it's so addictive, and then how you can use all that information to still use it for your benefit without frying your neurons. So let's get started. So to understand exactly how coffee works, let's take a little detour to Synapse Lab, where you'll learn exactly what coffee does to your brain. Okay, so in just under a minute, I will explain to you in detail what caffeine does to your brain and why that actually means it steals energy from your future. Let's go. So this is basically a diagram showing a neuron from one channel talking to another neuron from another channel. Now, as the day progresses, a molecule called adenosine starts to go up. Adenosine is a molecule that is what we call the sleepy chemical. The more your day goes, the more the adenosine starts to build up. And the more adenosine there is, the more sleepy and tired you become. So basically, as the day progresses, you start binding all your adenosine molecules to the neurons in your brain, eventually blocking the activity of those neurons and eventually making you more sleepy. But now what happens with coffee is that as soon as you drink coffee, the caffeine in the coffee goes and blocks those receptors that the adenosine was supposed to go and bind to. And so adenosine can no longer bind to that. And that's how caffeine actually then temporarily blocks the buildup of adenosine and causes you to feel less tired, giving you this feeling of energy and vitality. But the real kicker here is that as the day progresses, this caffeine is eventually going to wear off, leaving behind a whole lot of adenosine that was still building up during the course of the day. And now there's a surge of adenosine that's now going to go all together and bind to as many receptors as they possibly can, causing what we call a post-coffee crash. And that's why we say that coffee actually steals energy from your future self, because even though it gives you energy in the temporary present, your future self is eventually going to crash because of this. And that's what caffeine does to your brain. All right, so now that we're back from Synapse Lab and we found how coffee works on your brain and steals energy from your future self, what is one of the other ways that coffee makes you feel so good? Well, I've got one word for you, dopamine. Dopamine is a hormone that's been thrown around so much across the internet today. And unfortunately, coffee is also involved. Dopamine is your reward and motivation hormone in your brain. The more dopamine you have, the more focused, energized, and excited you are. Because as your brain releases more dopamine, you get this feeling of anticipation of a reward. And so your brain gets more focused towards achieving whatever it is it needs to achieve to get that reward. And so drinking coffee releases this dopamine and it feels like a cheat code for your brain because it doesn't actually have to go out there and get the reward the surge of dopamine already gives it that sense of anticipation and reward already and there's a special structure in your brain called a nucleus accumbens that is at the cornerstone of your reward pathway and that coffee often dives into and that's part of the big reason why coffee is so addictive but the problem is the more coffee you drink the more used to the coffee your brain becomes eventually leading to a state where you need more of the coffee to achieve the same effect, leading to a state of total dependence on the caffeine in the coffee. But now coffee is not just energy and wakefulness. Unfortunately, at high doses, coffee actually starts to become detrimental to your health. One of the key ways it does this is because it spikes your cortisol levels. Cortisol is your body's stress hormone. It prepares your body for a fight or flight kind of response. Now, when you wake up in the mornings, your cortisol levels naturally rise. 
even if you drank nothing at all. But the problem is most of us, as soon as we wake up, drink coffee at the first opportunity that we get. And this added surge of cortisol release causes a huge cortisol spike in our bodies. And that's where the problem is because it, in the short term, that could lead to jitters and even palpitations, but in the long term, it can even lead to anxiety problems. And add to the fact that the caffeine in the coffee actually stays in your system anywhere from six to 16 hours, which is a problem if you're somebody who likes to have coffee late in the afternoon or evening because that means the caffeine is still in your system when you're going to bed at night to sleep which of course will then mean that it will disrupt your sleep and disrupt the depth of your sleep you won't get any deep sleep and when we are in a deep sleep that's actually the time where our brain flushes out all the toxic proteins waste products that are built up during the day the kinds of proteins that if left to build up can predispose you to all sorts of neurodegenerative conditions like alzheimer's disease or parkinson's disease in fact, I made a whole video on this whole topic and the special system that's involved called the glymphatic system. And I'll leave a link to that video at the end of this one if you're more interested. But what's even more interesting is that even though coffee late in the afternoon or evening can disrupt the depth of your sleep and indirectly then predispose you to dementia and all sorts of diseases like Parkinson's disease, recent studies have also shown that coffee in the mornings, when in moderation, can actually have a protective effect from neurodegenerative diseases. And that's because coffee also contains a potent cocktail of antioxidants that act as an anti-inflammatory protective mechanism in our brains. And so that's where we're getting to the crux of this video. Because you see, I'm not here to ruin coffee for you. I love coffee just as much as anybody else. And if anything, this is a video to show you just everything you need to understand when you are putting something like coffee into your body. Because whether you like it or not, coffee is a drug. It's probably one of the most widely accepted drugs that we all agree to consume legally. And so with that principle, all you need to understand to really enjoy your coffee and enjoy the benefits of coffee is by introducing these few hacks that will maximize the benefits of what it can offer. So first things first, make sure to time your coffee at the right possible time to achieve its maximal benefits. What that means is because you now understand that as you wake up, your cortisol levels naturally rise, and then will crash, it's always best to have your cup of coffee at least about an hour to 90 minutes after you wake up. In this way, you get to maximize the benefits of the coffee without unnecessarily causing the cortisol surge if you had to take it immediately after waking up. Second is, as expected, to avoid coffee anytime in the late afternoon to the early evenings because now you understand that coffee actually stays in your system all the way up to 16 hours and can disrupt the depth of your sleep, which is, if you think about it, very counterproductive because you're drinking coffee for energy, focus, and vitality. But if it's now disrupting your sleep, well, then you're waking up in the morning even more tired, which leads you to drinking more coffee, which leads you to becoming more dependent on the coffee, which decreases the effects of the coffee, and you end up in this vicious, never-ending cycle where your sleep is bad, you're drinking more coffee, but the coffee doesn't work, and ultimately, you're just plain old tired. You don't want that. Third, introduce a microdosing strategy to your coffee. If you're somebody who loves one giant cup of coffee every single morning, I would advise against that because it's far more beneficial to divide that cup into maybe three smaller cups throughout the morning to help to curb those kind of cortisol spikes that may result from one giant cup of coffee. And that's going to help you stay alert without the unnecessary post-coffee crash. And fourth is actually a very interesting one. You see, we all know that a nap can give you a momentary boost in your energy, but so does coffee. What happens if you combine the two concepts together? Well, that's where you get the concept of what we call a coffee nap. So how it works is that you drink a cup of coffee, then you go and take a 20 minute nap. You see, while you're napping, all that little adenosine during the day is busy binding to its receptors and getting used up. So now when you wake up after those 20 minutes, the caffeine from that coffee only kicks in then. And so you're now in a state where you've used up some of that sleepy chemical adenosine Scene, plus the caffeine has now kicked in, leaving you feeling unstoppable with energy. And so here's the crux of the matter. Always remember that coffee is a tool and when used right can be one of the strongest tools for your brain and your overall vitality. Because let's face it, we all love coffee and want every single reason to maximize its benefits while offsetting its harm. And when used correctly, it can be one of the best things you can introduce into a life of brain vitality. And what's more, coffee is just 
just one of the best excuses to hang out with a friend. So share this video with a coffee loving friend and join me on this journey where I show you how to build a better brain. And click on this video right here to find out just how important your deep sleep is in activating a secret system that's only been discovered in our brains just over a decade ago. I'll see you there.